Good morning, my dudes. Today is my first midterm. It's Sunday. Yes, who the heck gives a midterm on a Sunday? I don't know. <laughs> it's chemistry. The material is quite easy, not gonna lie. I learned it in like grade 11, but you don't see me complaining. Category is gases. Maybe I'll explain a little bit. Hello everybody, my name is Jill Nye, the science woman, and I'm your friendly neighborhood chemist. Today, I'm here to teach you all about the stuff that you fart, smoke, and breathe. Now, there are certain laws with regards to gases that you should know, or else... You know what, we won't talk about that. Number one. This dude named Robert Boyle. He really was the boil on the butt of humanity that started this whole madness with gas chemistry. He said if you squish a gas, it will get angry at you, and then the pressure will increase. Next, we're on to Charles Law. This is Jack Charles. Not James Charles, Jack Charles. He said that if you heat a gas, it will also get mad at you, but this time, it will just get fatter. And finally, Avocado's Law. I think that's what I meant. Now this dude, this dude loved carbon a lot. So he invented the mole. Wait, no, that's the wrong one. Son of a bitch. But that's besides the point. Back to Avocado's law. He said that if you have equal volumes of ideal gases, the number of molecules will be the same. Now, once these laws had been drilled into everybody's brains and no one could stand it anymore, some big brained geniuses came along and said, hey, we can make a formula out of this. So they wrote pivnert. P is for pressure, V is for volume, N is for number of moles, R is whatever the frick this is, and T tells you if you'll burn your hand off. So class, that's like one tenth of everything that's gonna be on the test. The rest of the test will be questions that most likely Einstein would suffer with, so study hard because you'll fail anyways, so good luck. So yeah, that's what's on the test. I've been doing practice questions since yesterday. I'm gonna go study now. We have a couple hours until my midterm. It's at 1 p.m. It's not even 9 a.m. right now, so I'm gonna get some last minute brain crunching in. I'll see you guys in a bit. Did you know that scientists estimate that the human brain has a storage capacity of between 10 to 100 terabytes? I have several questions. Like one, how the heck did you compute that number? Did you plug a USB key into a brain or try to store a Word document on one? Like, which law did you break? Number two, if I run out of storage, which believe me, I'm planning on doing so, can I buy more storage or do I have to transfer that memory to the cloud? Can I upgrade my brain to a new storage capacity? How many souls do I have to sell? Anyways, after that bonanza where I did God knows what, it was time for me to eat breakfast. Now, I've been experimenting a bit with intermittent fasting and I have to say, I really like the way it makes me feel. I have my first meal at around 10 a.m. and it's essentially a bigger, badder, and scarier looking avocado tortilla. Let me explain. First, the tortillas themselves. These ones. I got them off of Amazon. <laughs> okay, just stick with me for one second. They were the only low carb and organic option I could find, so you know what? I'll do it. So once you have your two tortillas ready, we attack the avocado. I've been butchered on the internet for eating avocado pure, so here you go everyone, some salt. I also sprinkled some black pepper and these crushed red peppers, but not too much though because I don't want to have to amputate my tongue. Then you mash it all up together until it looks like some sick descendant of green play-doh and haphazardly spread it across your tortillas. Then the real fun begins. I take just some plain raw mushrooms, cut them up into tiny slivers, and slap those bad boys down the center of my canvas. And yes, the pink knife is a must. Why do I eat raw mushrooms you may be wondering? One word crunch. And finally, the last step in this ritual is to add grilled chicken. Around 50 grams of this stuff is more than enough. The only thing left to do now is to roll this thing up, which always ends up being a fight that is tooth and nail on both parts, so you've been warned. Throw them on a plate and breakfast is served. Or is it brunch? 
lunch. What about scrunch? Does it taste good? Of course it tastes good. Are you kidding me? This thing is one of the top 10 best things to ever come out of my brain. Long are gone the days of that skinny little tortilla. I have finally come out to play. Wait, did you think I'm scared? I'm not scared. I ate my textbook yesterday for dinner, okay? Believe me, I pooped out quantum mechanics this morning. It wasn't fun. But anyways, the fit. What's it looking like? First off, these leggings. No, they're not from Aritzia. I know, what the heck is happening? They're from Lululemon, and I only have to buy clothes from them because Aritzia doesn't make workout clothing. Then we have this white shirt. Uh, I don't think I have to say where that's from. And then this sweater. This sweater is from Hollister. This is one of the only sweaters that I have left over from the slight obsession I had with Abercrombie and Fitch in grade eight. This backpack, it's my apocalypse backpack. If the world ends, I throw everything I can in there and just run. Side note, the clashing greens between my backpack and these tights really just cements my position as a fashion icon. And finally, we have my hydro flasks. So yeah, that's the fit. Do you have an issue with me? Do you really have a problem with me? You want to be starting something? You're a vegetable. Okay, I need to go. <laughs> Hi. Yeah. Who's ready to write a test? Yesterday I was eating pasta while doing my homework and I was a little bit messy. <coughs> <coughs> Yummy. It's been nice knowing you. You ready for the tea? <laughs> so I walk in and then they pass out the test, whatever. And then the woman beside me, I don't know her name and God bless her, but she starts writing so fast. The desk is shaking. I'm sweating. I'm like, oh my God, like what the heck? Calm down. I do the first page. It's fine. And then the second page comes along, partial pressure. And I studied that a lot, but for some reason, the questions are so hard. It was like completely different from the textbook. And I was freaking out. So then, you know, when you like look over all the questions and the test and then you're like, okay, I don't know how to do that one. I'll just leave it to the end. And I get to the last page and then I'm already sweating because I don't know how to do like four questions. My face is red. And then, you know, I, I calm down. So I'm focused. I go back. I don't know what happened. Newton or Einstein or the gods just like blessed me with the information. I was able to solve it. It was like the plot twist of the century. I am ravenous so my dudes hello it's now 6 p.m and it's time for dinner you may be wondering joanna what the heck are you eating good question let me explain so i got home from the test i looked in the fridge and i found half a buttercup squash and i was like you know what i'll eat it I'll do it, I don't care, there's nothing else for me to eat. So, I carved out its guts, well tried to without making a mess, sprayed some olive oil on that thing, doused it in salt, and then threw it in the oven. Then, I had the genius idea to stuff this thing. You know, I've never eaten a stuffed chicken, I don't know how to make stuffing, but I made a pretty good guess. I tried my best, and I think I've created something that's eatable. I had some turkey breast. I cut up about 140 grams of that thing, diced it. It was disgusting. Raw meat is one of the seven disasters of the world, so we won't talk about that. And then I burned it in a pan. I put salt and some dill on it. And then I got a little bit more creative. I threw in some mushrooms, some red onions for spice, some green onions for funk, and some leeks for spunk. So yeah, it was pretty fun. At this point, the buttercup squash had been burning for a solid 20 minutes so I took it out of the oven. Now, this is where I probably screwed up. I found this little tin can of tomato sauce. I know, what the heck was I thinking? I don't know how long it's been in the back of my fridge, but I took it out. I thought, hey, maybe I can do something cool and like maybe the flavors will match. I put like a teaspoon of tomato sauce in the buttercup squash. It was kind of stupid in hindsight because there was literally nothing in that can. And then I put this stuff 
in the buttercup squash. It looked like I'd vomited up my breakfast and threw it in a vegetable and served it. Some 10 minutes later, uh, it came out and now it looks like this. I'm excited to eat it. So yeah, all that's left for me to do now is try it. That was good. So now, news flash, I'm gonna do more homework. That's essentially it. I hope you enjoyed this video. I didn't really have much to film this week, so I hope that this maybe tickled your pickle. Ew, but I'll see you guys next week. Hope you enjoyed this, hope you had fun. I love you so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Toodles.